I'm not even exaggerating when I say Titans is one of the worst written DC shows I've seen in recent memory. The show is straight dookie. On its own, it's not a well-written show, but when you take into account this is supposed to be an adaptation of the Teen Titans slash Titans roster of characters from DC Comics, it makes the show 10 times worse. Look at Beast Boy, they didn't even try. Any nod to his green appearance is through his stupid freaking green hair dye, like come on dude. And I know it's due to budgetary constraints, but it's just so funny to see him turn into like the same three animals throughout the course of the show. The first two seasons, bro would just only turn into a tiger, no matter the situation. What makes the show so infuriating to watch is how it never really gets any better. Every season just gets progressively worse writing wise. The show does not do a good job of balancing its core cast by giving proper screen time to each individual character. The roster is just too bloated. Beast Boy is the perfect example of how he gets neglected for like 75% of the show along with some of the other titans. Meanwhile, Dick Grayson most definitely is his center of attention. This is practically his own show. Other than Robin, this group built like the Teen Titans from Wish.com. But funny enough, the costumes in the show are actually solid enough where other characters like Hawk and Dove, Wonder Girl, pretty much all of the three Robin suits with Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake. Character-wise, they unfumbled every character in the show minus a few exceptions like Superboy when he was first introduced. It's kind of hard to mess up Superboy's character, especially in a visual sense. Probably the most accurate look out of all the characters. Donna Troy as Wonder Girl was pretty solid up until they decided to kill her off in the stupidest way imaginable. Titans first aired on an old streaming service called DC Universe, which was just the Netflix equivalent to all DC content, so DC live action shows, movies, cartoons, the whole nine yards. In 2021, the service transitioned to just strictly being a DC comic subscription service like Marvel Unlimited, so all the DC Universe exclusive shows like Titans, Harley Quinn, and Doom Patrol moved to HBO Max where they were now Max Originals. Titans had a higher budget with season three being the first Max Original season, but it still somehow had CW levels of execution. The series just reads like an edgy CW show with some of the dialogue or characters dropping F-bombs every two seconds, which doesn't make the show cooler or more mature. It just comes up as an edgy 16 year old having too much fun in the writer's room. Fuck Batman. So how'd you find me anyway? The tracker. On your arm? There's a fucking tracker in my arm? Whatever the fuck I want. The guy screaming, I'm not Robin. I don't want to be Robin. Standing there in a fucking Robin suit. I know who I am. Kick ass with Batman and I fucking love it. But who the fuck are you? <laughs> you. And you, you can fucking underline the parts where you weren't fucking lying? What the fuck? Fuck was I thinking, huh? Fucking school, I told you all my fucking secrets, huh? It's part of daddy's training to fuck me the whole time. And if we're being honest, this show was getting cooked even before it released. I remember when those set photos came out, whole show was getting flamed with the release of the first trailer as well. Folk was saying Starfire looked like a Walmart stripper. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine to have altered variations of characters when you're adapting comics, and the idea of having a darker tone for these characters isn't bad in theory, but this show's execution and storytelling and character writing is just laughable. Pretty much nothing notable about Starfire in the comics is present in this show whatsoever other than the fact that they mentioned she's from Tamarind. The core of her character just isn't Starfire. There's really nothing about her character that conveys the fact that she's supposed to be an alien. Her character traditionally centers around not fully understanding Earth customs when first being introduced, but in the show she just acts like a regular human with metahuman abilities. Something as simple as her powers aren't even consistent with the source material. They instead turned her into a freaking firebender instead of giving her her traditional energy blasts. Her powers aren't even green, it's just fire until in later Later seasons, they change it blue for whatever reason. Surprisingly enough, the visual components of the character are the least problematic aspects of why this is such an unfaithful adaptation. Her demeanor, personality, and the way she interacts with other characters does not resemble the character from the comics or the cartoon in any way, shape, or form. I suggest a large pizza with pickles, bananas, and mint frosting. Uh, Starfire, not everything on the menu is a pizza topping. Robin, you are my best friend. I cannot be in a world where we must fight. Fucking bitch. Queen fucking bitch. The actress for Starfire is not representative of the problems I have with this version at all, and that could pretty much be said for every actor in the show. I think they did a fine job of what they were given. And look, I get it. Adaptations are not copy and paste. There have been plenty of comic adaptations that have different in appearance or visual aesthetic in comparison to the comic counterpart, but some of them are still effective in capturing the essence of said character. Here, Starfire's character is so detached from what we know, even on a surface level. It's so funny how you can tell these writers have such a hard on for Dick Grayson and the rest of the Bat family members as they're given a lot of screen time over the rest of the Titans cast. Season 3 was supposed to primarily focus on Starfire's sister Blackfire as the main villain, which was teased at the end of season 2. While Blackfire does play a role in season 3, she's not the center of focus as the season is primarily centered around Jason Todd becoming Red Hood and Scarecrow as the main villain. I already made a video on how garbage Red Hood is in this show and how much the writers somehow made the worst version of Red Hood in the history of anything. Go watch that video because it's a banger. It's hilarious how much of a threat Scarecrow and Red Hood were even though the Titans have freaking Superboy who could just solve all their problems in seconds. This version 
version of Tim Drake is hot ass. They did not cook with this character at all. He is quite possibly the most useless main character in this entire series, and there really is no justified reason for him being on the team. He doesn't even become Robin until the end of the last season, that being season four, while the third season focused on introducing the character to the main story. I mean, at least they got bits of the core of the origin right, with Tim seeking out Dick Grayson and highlighting how big of a fan he is of Batman and Robin. He says he knows your Nightwing. Who is this? Says his name is Tim. Tim Drake. I was right before he told me Bruce Wayne is Batman. But his core personality traits that make him so interesting in the comics are essentially non-existent. You barely see his competency as a skilled detective. Bro has little to no training, which makes it even more nonsensical for him to don the Robin suit at the end. But hey, at least they cook with the Robin suit. The Bat film characters in the show might be terrible, but their costumes are on point. <laughs> Except for Nightwing, because for me personally, I'm not sure if this is a hot take or not, but I'm not a fan of his suit in this show. It's just too armored and bulky for me. I think it would have been best if they just went for a more sleek, simple design. There's no need to go overboard for a Nightwing suit. When it comes to Tim Drake as a character, he's proven himself to be more of a liability than a value asset to the team. He literally got shot by a scarecrow and died before coming back to life due to some BS. This is the next place. I'm dead? A few moments later. He made the jump. <gasps> He's back. His transformation to becoming Robin has nothing to do with Batman. He's not a valuable asset to the team. None of his cool stories and traits from the comics are present. This is not Tim Drake. <sighs> the fuck you doing here, nigga? Identify yourself, who the fuck are you? The only thing they focus on with this character in season four is his relationship with this dude named Bernard, who is the director of special projects at Star Labs. And it's just the most uninteresting piece of garbage I've had the displeasure of watching. Anytime they were on screen, I'm like, dog. I don't care! I don't care! It's not well written. It is so incredibly forced and unnatural. Not to mention this nigga Bernard is a grown ass man, probably in his mid to late 20s or something. Meanwhile, Tim Drake is supposed to be like a 16 year old in the show. It's all the same. I mean, they can only hang you once, right? <laughs> right, am I right, am I right? <laughs> Come on now, you leave me hanging. Come to think of it, it was probably best Tim never interacted with Bruce Wayne in the show. As I said in my Red Hood video, this is one of the worst adaptations of Batman I've seen in a hot minute. With his Joe Biden looking at how, how in the hell is he still active as Batman? This man is a straight up psychopath, immediately looking for new recruits after the death of Jason Todd. They had him kill the Joker, ultimately ruining the purpose of the Under the Red Hood storyline. Tries to commit suicide before getting saved by Donna Troy, who came back to life alongside Tim Drake in season three. And Donna's resurrection is pretty pointless for the status quo of the show going forward because for whatever reason she never shows up in the fourth season like at all. Now it's time to talk about literally the main character of this show. No big booty having Dick Grayson which is already a minus 10 points in the grade book. One thing they at least got down is this man's PhD in Rizology. Bro done pulled nearly every baddie in the show. Barbara Gordon, Starfire, Dawn aka Dove, freaking Jinx who was a former criminal slash thief. Somebody stop this man. I blew my chance to get Two-Face. Came out on top. That's all that mattered to you. I thought you liked me on top. Oh okay goddamn. Ah! It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! Titan solidifying its position as being one of my least favorite DC shows really started to take effect in season two, which saw Deathstroke as the main villain. The second season also took elements from the Judas Contract storyline from the comics, but instead of Tara Markov, you had Rose Wilson, Deathstroke's daughter Ravager, take up the role of being a mole of some sort on the team before ultimately actually becoming an ally and taking down Slate. A really big plot point is a flashback episode centered around the OG Titans roster, which consisted of Hawk and Dove, Dick Grayson as Robin, Donna Troy Wonder Girl, and Aqualad. Aqualad was killed by Deathstroke, in which Deathstroke was hired to kill some other lady, but unfortunately he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and ended up getting shot in the process. This in turn made the Titans go on a revenge quest against Slade by manipulating his son Jericho in order to get to Slade himself. They befriended Jericho by showing him around Titan's tower, which isn't even shaped like a T. Like, come on bro, y'all had one job. Jericho had trusted them while being oblivious to the fact that they were using him as bait to get to Deathstroke. But after some time when Jericho had revealed he had powers of his own of being able to control the bodies of other people, the Titans decided to actually tell Jericho the truth about his dad and why they saw him out in the first place. How do you know my dad kills people? He killed a friend of ours a few weeks ago. I decided to approach you to see if you can help us find him. Things are very different now. 
we want you to join us. After learning the malicious nature of his dad, Jericho ended up joining the team, but Deathstroke found out about all this after Jericho moved out of his mother's house. So Deathstroke leads Donna Troy into a trap to warn her and the rest of the Titans to stay away from Jericho. Dick alone tracks Slade to a chapel where he is confronted by him and Jericho, and they end up having a pretty big fight. One thing I will give the show credit for is its action sequences, whether it be with Jason Todd as Robin, Deathstroke, Nightmare, it doesn't matter, they go hard. As Deathstroke is about to stab and kill Dick, Jericho gets in the way and ends up getting stabbed himself. Jericho's death ultimately led to this roster of the Titans disbanding. Now, the thing is, the rest of the Titans didn't know about the actual cause of Jericho's death, so jump to five years later to the show's present day, Dick is essentially telling the rest of the team the story for the first time as he went in alone when confronting Deathstroke. And the reaction is so funny and nonsensical, the way they all get mad at him as if they didn't have a part to play in Jericho's death. And so the current team disbands yet again alongside the other characters like Raven and Jason Todd before ultimately coming back together at the end of the season. And I lied to you too. I told you that Jericho was dead when I got to the church. He died trying to save me from his father. I'm sorry. You lying sack of shit. How many other fucking half-truths have you told us? My brother's dead because of you. I'm out. I'm out too. I'm going with Donna. Ah uh, yes, get mad at Dick for telling you Jericho sacrificed his life to save Dick's even though all you bozos agreed on manipulating a teenage boy just to get revenge on his father. You guys make me sick to my stomachs fam. The Titans throughout this show don't feel like a team of heroes, nor do they do a lot of heroic things. They're just a bunch of douchebag hypocrites who treat each other like crap. Which is even further conveyed by how most of them treated Jason Todd like absolute garbage which led him to almost committing suicide as he thought everyone hated him because of his nature or whatever. Even though he was also going through PTSD after being captured and tortured by Deathstroke and almost fell to his death off a rooftop if it wasn't for Superboy saving up in the last second. And you will never guess how Dick Grayson responds to all of this nonsense. He leaves poor Garfield slash Beast Boy to take care of Superboy by himself in the tower as this season introduced the character of Connor Kent, Superboy, who has recently escaped the captivity of Cadmus. He visits Jericho's mother to apologize for the whole ordeal. Apologies about five years too late, but better late than never, I guess. She says she won't forgive him and Deathstroke is like, oh yeah, piss off, mate. Dick decides to go to an airport in hopes of traveling to who knows where, but then he gets the bright idea of assaulting a bunch of security officers to get himself arrested so that he may rot in a prison cell as he feels guilty for everything that just happened. Nigga, what? This is the dumbest thing I've seen any character do. Dick stays in a prison cell up until he gets the bright idea to escape federal prison and gets inspired to become Nightwing due to the antics of his cellmates. This man, Dick Grayson, technically is an escaped convict, but I kid you not, this show does not bring this up ever again in any way, shape, or form. The season two finale is just so awful and anticlimactic. Deathstroke just gets stabbed to death by his daughter, Ravager, who is now officially a good guy, I guess. This happens in like the first 12 minutes of the season finale as the rest of the episode focuses on taking down Cadmus, who have my controlled Beast Boy and Superboy. No! Killing me with this also revealed before the finale was that Jericho put his consciousness or used his ability on Deathstroke right before being killed. So before Deathstroke was killed, he did that same thing again, but to his sister Ravager. So now they share the same body, I guess. And they are never brought up, nor do they appear ever again for the rest of the series. They help reverse the mind control of Connor and Garfield. Donna Troy dies by electrocution. They have a funeral and this, then the season ends. To this day, I genuinely would never understand why the writers had the need to implement Cadmus in this season when they had Deathstroke as the center antagonist. That's all you need. There's no need to introduce a less popular antagonist it doesn't benefit the show in any way other than introduce Superboy since he was a Cadmus clone with half the DNA of Superman and the other half from Lex Luthor. And the problem with Nightwing in this season in particular is how it retreads the steps of season one, which was centered on him escaping Bruce's shadow and becoming Nightwing. Hell, the original season one finale was supposed to have him don the Nightwing suit as well as the other Titans like Raven, Beast Boy, and Starfire getting costumes as well. Hell, freaking Batman was supposed to show up via the behind the scenes photos with Dick, Jason, and Batman together on screen. But after the show got greenlit for season two, they decided to scrap that finale entirely and stretch Dick's journey into becoming Nightwing for a whole nother freaking season. And the season one finale instead focused on Nightwing going through some nightmare sequence hallucination or whatever thanks to Trigon in which a hypothetical scenario Batman starts killing all of his rogues and Dick has to stop him. And oh my god this version of Trigon is so trash bruh. The way they played out the finale of season one you could tell that the original finale was scrapped due to the season ending on a gigantic cliffhanger with what seemed to be Dick mind controlled by Trigon. They literally end the season on that note in which the entire 
entirety of season one focused on Raven's character and the build up to Drygon, only to use him in the first episode of season two and they literally kill him off in that same episode. If you were gonna waste Trigon like that, why wait an entire season just to kill him off in the first episode of the second season? That episode literally could have just been the finale of season one. His design and visual aesthetic freaking sucks, my lord, what were y'all cooking in the studio? It's funny cause this ain't even the only time they fumble the character of a Trigon. Season four focused on the Church of Blood and Brother Blood as the center antagonists. The entire purpose of the Church of Blood was to resurrect Trigon but they immediately kill him off again as soon as that plan comes into fruition. Like how the hell do you single handedly fumble one of the biggest teen titan villains twice in one show? Imagine if the MCU had done all that build up to Thanos only to kill him off in the first 20 seconds of Infinity War. Y'all remember in the Teen Titans cartoon where they had a whole arc where Trigon was the main threat and they had it be this really grand story involving Raven and the rest of the cast and how well they handled that whole plotline? Yeah, good times. Take me back to when adaptations of the Teen Titans were good, please. As I stated earlier, the writers do not do a good job of writing each character with equal quality and the show does a bad job of implementing all these different plot threads that are present in every season. Season 2 alone focuses on the Deathstroke plot, the introduction of Rose Wilson, Deathstroke's daughter, delving into Starfire's past, Dick Grayson's transition to becoming Nightwing, the introduction of Superboy and Cadmus, Jason Todd struggling to work with others. This is all in one season even though some of these could be their own season as they're not given enough time to flesh out. Beast Boy and Raven are utterly useless in the second season. Season 3 just further adds to that problem with the introduction of Barbara Gordon, delving and introducing Tim Drake's character, Jason Todd's death and him turning into Red Hood with him working alongside Scarecrow and Gotham, the utter character assassination of Bruce Wayne Batman, the resurrection of Donna Troy, the introduction of Blackfire and her working with the Titans and hanging out with them in Wayne Manor, Starfire discovering the intricacies of her powers or whatnot, and again, all of these plot threads just make the show disjointed and messy. An example of them getting rid of a couple of characters is how they handled the departure of Hawk and Dove. Red Hood leads Hank into a trap and inserts a bomb in his chest, and while the Titans try to figure out how to deactivate the bomb, Nightwing and Dove confront Red Hood, but Jason plays some mind games with Dove, tempting her to shoot him with a gun. But to Jason's play, it turns out the trigger to the gun was actually the detonator that set off the bomb in Hank's chest, killing Hank in the process. Don't tell me what I fucking want. You can't come back from this. We can save Hank another way. Done! <laughs> Oops. The guy gave you the detonator. <laughs> Now, this is a pretty emotional scene. You'd be curious on how Dove would handle such a tragic loss considering how much of a strong relationship he had with Hank. How is she gonna deal with Jason? Will she be set on revenge? How will her presence impact the story going forward? Well, the writers clearly didn't think of any of those questions because she just leaves the show, like immediately after Hank dies, never seen again. Talking about some, I'm going to Paris or something, like what? Man, I'm so glad that DCU is developing a live action Teen Titans film because I cannot have the only live action depiction of the Titans cast be this nonsense. For what it's worth, the cast of the show is definitely the strongest asset I think the actors do well for what they're given and my problems with the show have nothing to do with their performances I just cannot fathom how a group of writers consistently screw up this badly with each season they don't even attempt to accurately depict these characters I guarantee you a group of normies who were only exposure to the Teen Titans the OG cartoon would write a better group of characters than this garbage part of me is kind of glad the show never introduced characters into the mix like Damian Wayne Wally West or Roy Harper who knows how badly they would have fumbled those characters save them for the future and hopefully they'll be depicted a lot better than James Gunn's DCU